Hello and welcome to this session of SAS Global Forum 2021. I'm Colleen Farley of Staticlism. I'm a machine learning scientist with expertise in a wide variety of machine learning topics, including natural language processing. There's a lot of text data out there today, and there's a lot of different applications that can make sense of text data. What do all of these types of data have in common? Clinical case notes, chatbot conversations, client email interactions, court case summaries, published research articles, tweets, voice recordings, and any other text data that you can think of. These are all examples of text data that contain informative features that can be used in other machine learning applications. Oftentimes, this type of data contains information that you can't get from structured data sets. In addition, the linguistic insights on how people speak can give a lot of information about the speaker or writer. So let's go through an example from the legal field. Imagine the witness and the robber in the examples below. How might these observations impact the outcome of a police investigation? So witness number one gives this statement. She pulled the gun, took the money and ran. Statement two from the second witness reads as, the petite blonde pulled a shotgun on the clerk at station two, filled a bag with cash from the register and absconded with the money and a handful of pens. What do you see when you imagine these two witnesses? And what do you think these will add to a police investigation? Which witness statement might have more impact on a jury? There are many examples of text data being used to make decisions today. For instance, within clinical case notes, how might the way a clinician records their text data inform health outcome models? How might they reflect on individual clinicians? Could you imagine two very different case notes from the same patient and how that patient might be treated later on? Fortunately, we have a lot of ways to wrangle text data. Natural language processing is a collection of tools that helps the machine parse human language into something that is understandable by algorithms. This mostly focuses on what is said. Computational linguistics is all about deriving insight about human behavior or traits based on text data. This is important for how it's said. Let's go through some of the common NLP tools. When we're wrangling text data, we first have to parse documents and sentences. Let's consider this example. Bonnie hopped into Clyde's new car. One of the first steps to wrangling text data is breaking the sentence into tokens, which are words or punctuation. An example of a token might be the word Bonnie or the period at the end of the sentence. Oftentimes we wanna parse out the punctuation, which doesn't contain as much information as the words themselves. So there are tools that can parse out the, the apostrophe and the period in the sentence. Stop words are also important. These are the less important words in language, such as a or the. Um, there are quite a few other words that can be added to the common dictionaries. Um, so perhaps there's a word that appears often but is known not to be informative. This can be added to your list of stop words. Root words are also important. There's a process called stemming or lemmatizing that deals with different tenses and different forms of a word. Let's look at the word hopped. This is a past tense verb and hopped, hopping, hops, and other variations all come from the same root word, hop. Being able to stem or lemmatize these words is often useful when you're dealing with the wrangling of data. Um, most applications will read these as something different if you're not stemming or lemmatizing. 
So hopped and hopping would be treated differently in a model later on. Another important process in NLP is tagging features. So parts of speech taggers will tag parts of speech such as nouns like Bonnie, verbs like hopped, as well as their tenses. So some parts of speech taggers can actually identify that hopped is a past tense verb. This can be useful when you're looking at the linguistic structure of text data. Another common application with tagging features is identifying clauses. This sentence does not have a clause, but there are many other more complex sentences where being able to parse things into clauses can help make sense of what's happening in each piece of the sentence. Grammatical relations is another item in feature tagging. So this application would be able to recognize different pieces of grammar within the sentence. Entity recognition is another really important feature. Most of the common entity recognition softwares will look for proper nouns like Bonnie or Clyde. In addition, some specialty entity recognition software can actually tag entities of interest for the user. So entity recognition within the medical field might include specific references to diseases or symptoms of interest within the application itself. Deriving sentiment is also very important. Sentiment refers to the positive, negative, or other emotional qualities that are underlying the text. This is very language dependent and dictionaries only exist for certain languages. However, for most common text sources, there will be a tool that can work within that language. There are many types of sentiment dictionaries. Um, one of the more common ones is the AFIN dictionary, which parses sentences into positive, negative, and neutral counts within the sentence. In addition, many psychological models exist, and a lot of open source research has focused on tagging different words with features like anger or happiness or surprise. And these dictionaries can be used to derive more complicated sentiment analysis on whatever text you're analyzing. It's also important to be able to take all of this parsing and tagging and turn it into a data set that can be integrated with other applications. There are many options for turning NLP results into usable data in machine learning and statistical tools. There's vectorization, word frequency matrices, and summary tables. Each of these aims to embed what's learned in the text into a matrix or some sort of table that can be easily integrated or analyzed on its own. It's also important to understand how statistical tools, especially those in SAS, can be used to understand the results of NLP. Summary statistics are often important in dashboards and monitoring applications. For example, conversation length can give a measure of engagement. For customer service type data, you may want to consider a swear count to understand when you might need to escalate a call with a bot to a person. Conversation sentiment over time can help you understand how users are engaging and getting satisfaction from a product or service. Keyword frequencies can also be used to understand which issues are most pressing with a particular product. NLP features can also be integrated with other variables within machine learning models. So there are a lot of examples of combine, combining NLP data with data from structured databases. So clustering, for example, may focus on types of churn from client feedback and account data. Predictive modeling might include modeling of patient outcomes from features derived from case notes, as well as traditional medical record data.
There's also a lot of research within psychometric applications. Some recently published papers have identified that NLP data can be used to identify personality traits within the field of industrial psychology research. Another use of NLP within psychometrics is author identification within plagiarism software. So authors often have a style of word usage and grammar usage that can be used to determine authorship. In addition, some applications have used writing samples to understand the release risk within justice systems, as well as the relapse risk within mental health populations. There are many other uses of NLP. Some of these include chatbots and personal assistants, which use a combination of natural language processing and other text-based applications to answer common questions, look up data, and assist with other customer needs. Translation services are common, so um, oftentimes you may want to translate between one language or another, or even transcribe from voice data. Sentence completion is another common use of NLP these days. In general though, NLP works the same way as many statistical models and machine learning methods. If you put junk into the NLP pipeline, you're gonna get junk out. There are many useful references and softwares to help you get started in NLP. Some of the main software options include the NLTK package in Python, the SPACY package in Python, Stanford's Core NLP, which is in Java, and the Spark NLP from John Snow Labs, which is in Spark. Here is a list of some of the papers that have come out recently within the NLP literature. The field is very wide and applications are across most fields now. Thank you so much for watching this talk. Here's my contact information in case you wanna know more about NLP and its applications.